Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to talk about gas stoichiometry. Today's essential question, how can stoichiometry and the gas laws be combined to determine amounts of products or reactants? Um, for today's lecture, you will need to have your periodic table, unit conversion table, and calculators handy. All right, um, we're going to just do a couple practice problems. If you remember, stoichiometry is a method used... Um, to, de to determine the amount of reactant or product needed. Um, because we're in gas laws unit, our, our reactants and or products may be gases, and often you want the volume of a gas, not the mass of a gas. Okay, so let's read through this problem. It says, if the combustion of ethanol produces 98.2 milliliters of water measured at 2.26 atm and 40 degrees celsius. What volume of CO2 is produced when measured at STP? All right. Well, we're going we're going from water to carbon dioxide um, which would be a stoichiometry problem. But the stoichiometry we know you need to know mass or moles. It looks, though, like they give us enough information that we can use maybe the ideal gas law to determine moles. So we have here, when we're talking about water, they give us the volume of water, they give us the pressure of water, and they give us the temperature of water. Um, so with that information, we can calculate the number of moles of water. So we'll be using the equation... PV equals NRT. So let's see, make our little list here. Uh, put that T down a little bit lower. All right, so let's see what they give us. They tell us the pressure is 2.26 atm. Our volume is 98.2 milliliters, but using ideal gas law, because of the R, we need to convert that to liters, so we'll have 0 0.0982 liters. We're going to try to find out the moles, and our temperature is 313K. Well, it's, it's 40 degrees Celsius, which we're going to add to um, 273 to get Kelvin which is 313. Okay, and so because our pressure unit is ATM, we will use the R 0 0.0821 liter ATM. Okay. All right, let's take this information here and plug it into our formula, PV equals NRT. So we have P times V equals N times R times T. All right, let's get rid of the, uh, the units on the bottom so we can cross out the K. Um, the moles we can't cross out unless we multiply both sides by mole, which I, of course, did not leave myself enough room. Just shove it in there. Now they'll cross out. Okay, and so now let's do some multiplication. When I multiplied the left-hand side, I got 0 0.22. 193 ATM liters equals, oh, I forgot the moles, so I'm so sloppy. ATM liters moles equals, multiplying the right, I got 25.6973 liters ATM. And when solving for x, I came up with 0 0.0086363, etc. 
mole. And our sig figs are going to be one. Hmm, I don't really like that. Oh well. So we're going to have 0 0.009 mole of H2O. Okay, so now we have 0 0.09 mole H2O, and we're looking for volume of CO2. So the first thing we need to do is get from mole H2O to mole CO2. Um, and to do that, we can use stoichiometry. So our question is going to be 0 0.009 mole H2O equals X mole CO2. And for this, we'll use the grid. And to convert from mole H2O to mole CO2, we use the mole ratio from the balanced equation. So we're going to end up with 3 mole H2O on the bottom. So the units cross out, the units and molecules. And 2 mole CO2 on the top. That stuff crosses out, and when we now calculate, we come up with 0 0.006 mole CO2. Okay, so now we know we have 0 0.006 mole CO2. We want to get to the volume. Well, now we of CO2, so now we know the mole of CO2. We also know they give us standard temperature and pressure, which means we know temperature and pressure, and we can solve for volume. So we're going to have PV in R and, I can do this, R and T. So our pressure is going to be 1 atm for standard pressure. Our volume is our x. We have 0 0.006 moles. The temperature is 273 for standard temperature. And because we have atm, we're going to use again 0 0.0821 liters atm mole k. All right, now we just need to plug this into the ideal gas law, which again is PV equals nRT. So we're going to have pressure times volume equals number of moles times R, which is 0 0.0821 liters ATM mole K times temperature, which is 273K. And let's see, we can cross out moles, and we can cross out Kelvin. So to continue this, we're going to end up with 1 atm x equals... 0 0.1344798 liters ATM. And when solving for X, we'll divide 1 ATM on both sides, giving us 0 0.1344798 liters. And our sig figs is 1. So the final answer is 0 0.1 liters CO2. So when you're doing stoichiometry problems, you just, with gas laws, you're just going to have to flip back and forth between the ideal gas law looking for moles or plugging in moles and unit conversions using stoichiometry, really the mole mole ratio, using the balanced equation. Okay, let's try another one, but this time, why don't you try it on your own and see if you can do it. Then hit play. All right, so we have 15.3 grams of sodium reacts with excess water. So we, starting with sodium, we want to end up with hydrogen. 
Um, so we know we're going to have to use stoichiometry because we're changing between molecules or atoms. So first of all, they give us 15 grams of sodium. And I want to know the volume of hydrogen. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to first figure out the number of moles of hydrogen, okay, using stoichiometry. So my question will be 15.3 grams of sodium equals X mole of hydrogen. So 15.3 grams Na over 1. So first thing we want to do is get two moles of sodium, and we can do that using the one mole equals molar mass. So we'll have 22.99 grams of sodium and one mole of sodium, the grams canceling out. And now I can go from moles of sodium to moles of hydrogen using the mole-mole ratio from the balanced equation. And we're interested in sodium and hydrogen. So I'll have two mole and A and one mole H2. Those cross out, giving us, if we multiply across the top, we get 15.3 mole H2 over uh, 45.98. And when we divide, we end up with 0 0.3327. Five, oh, I forgot my two, et cetera, mole H2. And if we look at sig figs, it looks like we have three, so that means we have 0 0.333 mole H2. Okay, we don't have the answer yet because it was asking for the volume of hydrogen so let's see what information we have now. We have the number of moles of hydrogen, and we have the temperature and pressure. So now we can use the ideal gas law to uh, figure out the volume. So we got pressure, volume, number of moles, R, R, and temperature. All right, so our pressure is standard, so it's 1 atm. We're looking for volume. We have 0 0.333 moles of hydrogen. Our temperature is standard, so it's 273K. And our R, because again, we're using ATM, is going to be 0 0.0821 liters ATM. Okay. All right, let's plug this into the ideal gas law. So we're going to have pressure times volume equals number of moles times R times temperature. Okay, and let's see, we can cross out moles and temperature. So now we have 1 atm times x equals 7.4636289 liters atm. Okay, and to solve for x, we divide both sides by 1 atm. And that basically all cancels out. And our sig figs, we have three sig figs. So the final answer is 7.46 liters. So, again, stoichiometry. You're going to use a stoichiometry of gases. You're going to use a combination of stoichiometry, um, mass to mole and mole to mole conversions, and also sometimes mole to mass, and the ideal gas law. All right, folks, that's it for today.